The year is 1920. At a California police department, a murder interrogation is about to get ugly. Observing the procedure is a well-educated young cop, John Larson. He's been hired to help modernize the Berkeley police. And he's convinced it's time to stop bouncing bad guys off the walls to make them sing. Larson hated the idea of physical intimidation of suspects. It produced false confessions. It made citizens and suspects resentful. John Larson is no ordinary cop. He's also a medical student with a PhD in physiology and a passion for how science can help solve crime. Larson figures there must be a more civilized way to extract a confession. As a physiologist, he recalls the suspect's physical responses, darting eyes, sweating brow, his shifting body language. It reminds Larson of a Harvard psychology experiment that tried to determine when someone was lying by measuring spikes in their blood pressure. The study's results were mixed. But the concept kicks Larson's medical mind into overdrive. What if he could create a machine that could monitor not just blood pressure, but several physiological responses? The criminal's own body might reveal whether he's telling the truth or not. Over the next six weeks, Larson hunts for the best instruments to monitor physiological responses. And with the help of a technician, he brings them all together into a single device. Larson will hook up his suspect with three separate instruments to measure blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing. All wired into a central device and connected to three needles that pass over a rolling drum of paper. As questions are answered, minute fluctuations in each physiological response will cause the needles to vibrate, recording them in a continuous line. Larson figures the stronger the vibrations, the bigger the chance the suspect is lying. The result is a machine that will become known as a lie detector. It's time to test it. Larson believes that for his invention to work, he has to come up with a standard procedure for asking questions. Well, let's uh, give this a try and see how it works. First question, what is your name? David Johnson. How long have you been married? It's important to get people responses to completely innocuous questions like, did you have a cigarette this morning? Uh, so that you can compare that to the more intensely probing questions about the crime. As Larson digs deeper, have you ever been attracted to another woman other than your wife? His test subject's physical reactions begin to change. No. It shows that he's uncomfortable and may be lying. It's the response Larson needs. Over several weeks, he fine-tunes the way he asks questions. In test after test, his machine confirms a consistent pattern of physiological responses. Larson is ready to test his dancing needles with a real-life crime. He finds it here, a series of robberies at a Berkeley sorority house. Cash was miss missing from drawers, jewelry had gone missing, and a diamond ring had been lost by Margaret Taylor, a freshman from San Diego. Police are sure it's an inside job. It's up to Larson to find out which of the 90 sorority girls was the thief. Larson calls in 14 of them, a mixture of likely suspects and clearly innocent controls. Larson systematically works through the list, but the girls show no signs of physiological stress until he comes to Helen Graham. She's a student nurse from Kansas. That machine's gonna measure your heart rate and your pulse. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. I want you to answer them just as honestly as possible. Well, I'll be telling the truth. We're about ready to go. Is your name Helen Graham? Yes. Are you a student 
at Berkeley College. Yes. And as he worked through the questions, moving from those that were relatively innocuous and innocent questions to the one that pertained to the crime, he noticed that her blood pressure began to rise very dramatically. Helen, do you know who took the ring? No. Did you take the money, Helen? No. The machine needles scream that he's found his thief. I want to get out of here right now. Before Larson can get a confession, Graham explodes in a rage and storms off. But the lie detector test has shaken her. Several days later, she fesses up. I just, I just saw it there and I had, I had, I just took it and I'm not a bad person. The lie detector notched up its first success. It had, for the first time, fingered the guilty party in a crime. It's front page news across the country. How Larson's test has exposed the thief. But notice right away how it had done so. The lie detector had worked in the College Hall case because it made one of the people feel so guilty that they confessed to the crime. And that is how the lie detector has worked ever since. The lie detector isn't foolproof, so its results are only rarely accepted in court. But its psychological effect is huge and helps investigators bring new information to light. Larson's invention had one other long-lasting effect. Believe it or not, one year later, John Larson married Margaret Taylor, the innocent victim of the crime. And that's the honest truth.